we're going to talk about getting married. And say you're getting married here in the Philippines, or you decided to get married in the United States of America, or whatever country you're from. Uh, so today we're going to talk about this briefly. And here are some questions. This came from a, a good friend of mine. His name's John. Uh, I'll put his link in the in the uh, video. Uh, he, he has a channel that's called Phillies to Phoenix. He lives in uh, Phoenix, of course. <laughs> and him and his uh, beautiful wife, uh, they uh, lived in Cebu here a while. They're back in the States. And uh, he sent me this list that he received from his church. And uh, I really find this list quite interesting. Uh, there's over 100 questions on here that... So I want to talk about, say, for instance, you you're, you found your lady, you came here, or you're in the States, and you found your lady, and you're bringing them to the States, and or you've already been here before to make the prearrangement of meeting the family, taking the pictures, and all those things that you had to do in order to bring her through the uh, USA. Say, for instance, everything is fine, and everything is good, but you're just trying to... Uh, Make sure you have all the pieces cues together. But here's some questions you really need to ask. And I'll, I won't go through all of these 120. I'll go through the ones that I think is really important. And I think that these you need to ask these questions to your Filipina. If you're going to get uh, married, uh, these questions that are really simple questions. But really, they're questions sometimes, oh, I forgot to ask you. And it's like a month later, oh, I forgot to ask you. Another month goes, I, and then you ask too. And maybe if you ask all these questions in the beginning. Now, not only this list, it's great for someone that is married. I mean, excuse me. Well, I mean, it's great for married too. But, I mean, someone is for male and female. So, the male has to answer it and the female has to answer it. And you guys look at each other's answers. And you switch papers. So, I go through the list. You want this list, all you got to do is email me or message me in the comments. And I'll send you this list. Like I said, it came from John. And uh, he, he had this list. I did not write down all of them. Let's see. I wrote down, uh, I don't know, 35 of them. There's over 100. And some of them really uh, pertain and some don't. But it's still questions you need to ask each other, really. Yeah. Here you go. Here, here's the first question. What benefit do you see being married or being single? Self-explanatory. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> So what benefit do you see being married? And do you see a benefit in it and or being single? And this that's a good question. Number two, you as a person, can you be flexible and adaptable to any situation? And of course, some common sense is going to tell you most people say, yeah, I can, I can be flexible. I can, I can handle that. I can deal with that. And so it's okay. Has the in-laws been informed about your marriage and how did they feel? What did they say? What kind of uh, comments did they give you back? What kind of rapport? Were they contented or were they happy? Now this is uh, both people of course. If you're unhappy with your past will you tell your parents? So say for instance if you're not agreeing in any given situation that's going on in your life are you going to tell your friends and parents about it first? Are you going to ask your advice from your friends to say, okay, what should I do? Or are you going to talk to your husband about it? Are you going to go directly to your parents or friends and say, I don't know? And are you just going to try to figure it out? So if you need advice, first and foremost, who are you going to call? Are you going to call your parents or are you going to call your friends if you need advice? And I, I say sometimes some people will immediately call their friends first instead of giving it. They will go ask their friends first instead of asking their partner or you know their best friend, their new potential partner, their husband and or wife. You know what? Give me five reasons. Here's another question. Give me five reasons why you're marrying your fiance. What are the five reasons? Give me five good reasons why you're marrying. Are you marrying? I'm marrying him because of money. I'm marrying him because he's good looking. I'm marrying him because I don't know. That's the questions you need to ask. It's really good questions. And you fill this out and then have a consultation. Now, this was their, the church gave him this before they got married. It's really some good good questions. Do you want to duplicate your parents' marriage? If your parents had a successful marriage and they're happy and contented, 
Do you want to duplicate it? Would you like to have just like your parents? Or you want to live just like your parents? Or say your parents are fighting and arguing all the time. Do you want to be just like that? How do you want to be? Give list three godly characters you have. And you know what? I want to say this real quick. To me, one of the most important factors for me whenever uh, Ruth and I got together was first and foremost, are you Christian? Of course, that's the first question she asked me. Are you Christian? Yes. You believe in God? Yes. And I asked her the same thing. You believe in God? Yes. Uh, what denomination? I said, I'm Southern Baptist. I'm Baptist. And she says, I'm Seventh-day Adventist. I said, okay. They're basically almost the same. They have other beliefs a little different, but okay. Then we got to talking about it. Then we got to talking about godly characters. What kind of character? What do you believe in? I'm, I'm old school. I'm really old school. I'm, uh, I'm old school 100%. I'm an honorable guy. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I do it. If I cannot, and that's absolutely, I don't think I've had very few cannots in my life. I think before I say, because I don't want to tell a lie. And if I shake your hand on it, it's guaranteed. There's no going back on it. That's the kind of guy I am. And that's the same thing with her and I. There's two character flaws you're seeing in your, fia in your fiance. So flaws, at least two. That you've seen. He talks too much, or he eats too much, or whatever, whatever flaws. Now, flaws could be different for everybody. Everybody knows a flaw, right? And the flaws could be so different that you really don't know. I mean, you probably list 10, right? Or 20, or 30, or maybe a whole page. I don't know. Are you discouraged? Do you feel depression at times? And that's a very good question. Do you feel depression at times? Yeah, that's a very good question. Sometimes people do feel depression. Sometimes people do feel that. And uh, and how often do you feel it, right? Do you love your partner? That's question number 13. Do you really love your partner? And if you do, any problems with marrying your partner? If so, please tell. And list. Are you okay sometimes with being alone? Can you sit alone in a room without having a phone, a TV, or anything, a book, or anything? Can you be by yourself? Do you like it quiet? I know why they ask that question. I, I know exactly why they ask that question. Can you sit in a room and be quiet for one hour? Not talk to anybody, not look at anything. Say it's a white room or whatever color room. It's all one color. There's no tiles on the wall to count. There's nothing to count in the room. That's what I used to do. I used to count the tiles. I count the tiles left, right, up, down, sideways, diagonally, everything else. Because I'd be bored. I get bored very simply. Easy. And so, quiet in a room. And I said to myself, I can be, for sure. I can sit for five hours quiet. But there's a reason why they ask that. Are you a procrastinator? Can you? Are you someone that does something? Are you procrastinate? And say, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm not, I don't need to do my laundry. Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow rolls around. Ah, it's okay. I'll do it the next day. What kind of person are you? Do you want to get a done deal? I'm a done deal guy. I used to call it DD. I'm a done deal guy. So if someone says, hey, did you do it? I say, it's done deal. So they used to call me that, done deal guy. No matter what. They say, hey, go take care of this. Go do this. Go do this. Go do it. Okay. I, I wrote it down. Okay. It'll be done today. And they'll come back. You do it. Did everything you said. Do you like making decisions? Do you have a problem making your own decisions? Can you make your own decision? That's a big question. Can you make your own decisions? Some people can, some people can't. Some people have a problem making their own decisions. You know, and that's that's the thing. I understand why they ask that question. Can you make your own decisions? Some people can or cannot. What kind of music do you like? Do you have to have it on all the time in the background? Boy, what a good question that is. You know, really... What, what a great question. You have to have it. And I understand what that's about, too. Um, do you like watching TVs? If you do, what kind of movies and sports do you like? That's a great question. Do you have couple friends? Like friends of couples. Couples. Uh, two. Pair. Do you like sports? How about exercise? Do you like getting up and moving around? you like going places? Where do you like to go? Do you like exercising? Do you like going places and doing things? Can you talk to others? Can you communicate with others? Can you have a conversation with other people? 
And that's the thing. Can you have can you have a conversation with other people? Some people say, well, I can't really have conversation with someone else because uh, I don't know what to say to them. Well, there are people out there. If you're thinking about marrying someone, uh, you would kind of want to know these things so you can help that person along. Because if you love them and care for them, maybe they are shy. Maybe they don't want to talk to anybody. Maybe they decided that, oh, I'm not going to do this today. So are you okay talking to others? So today we're talking about marriage preparation worksheet. Uh, do you, and here's number question number 25, do you like to cook? And this is male and female. So the male would say, okay, I do, or I don't, or can I cook, and will I cook, and will you clean, and will you take care of stuff? And this is a great question. It kind of goes into uh, what kind of person you are, you know. Are you type of person that you can clean and will clean, or you don't bother you? Now, there are married couples that a guy hates to clean and a woman hates to clean. And can you imagine their house? Their house has got to be limited on what they can and cannot do. Number 26 on this list is, what do you? what is your attitude about authority? Do you like authority in your life? Meaning, authority meaning, uh, do you like to be told on what to do? Some people hate to be told anything. Uh, some people criticize and who, who who's talking and who's not talking, right? List of a few happiest memories in your life. So, happy memories. Now, see, the, the, and the reason why they're asking that question is, is they want to see if you're a, someone that is a happy person, depressed person, happy times. Well, I don't really have any happy times. I never went anywhere. My parents, I'm here in the Philippines. My mom and papa, we never went anywhere. But they're, a Filipino have many happiest times. Every day is a happy day with them. Going to the birthday party. Yeah, we just went to the birthday party. That was, that was a great time. See, and they're trying to figure out what kind of personality because you need to ask these questions if you're thinking about getting married to a Filipina and or a, a, a male here, Filipino, you need to ask these questions. You know, because that's the thing. Here's one I remember. Like number six, it says, if you need advice, are you going to call your parents or are you going to call your friends first? That's really important. Who are you going to call? Are you going to ask your husband or your fiance? I always ask Ruth everything. It comes down to it. I'll ask, I'll ask Ruth a, a question before I even make this in decision. I say, "What do you think?" And she'll tell me it's wrong, or right, or her personal feeling about it. You know. So a list of happiest memories. And then remember, there's a hundred and some odd questions on here, and I only wrote down like thirty something because I didn't want to write them all down because not everybody. I wrote down the ones I think was prevalent to me. Now here's something. Uh, People don't ask you this question is, and I want to say this is, you need to ask this question: Are you what, what religion are you? I kind of went through that. And if you are, if so, what religion? And do you practice that religion? And how often you go to church? And or you know, and to get into that and ask all the questions, because she's going to want to know about a man. She's going to know. The main thing a female really wants to know is: Is the man going to be reliable? Is he going to cheat on me? Is he going to be trustworthy? Is he someone that I can depend on? And it's someone that I don't have to worry about uh, running around, whatever. I want someone to take care, of, help take care of the children, whether it's existing children and or children they're going to have. And that's all women want to know. Am I going to be taken care of? And I understand that. See, we all have that problem. Males have a problem. They uh, always have that wandering eye sometimes. But if they have that wandering eye, it's not a bad thing. Just because they wander don't mean they're going to wander away. I may wander, but they're not necessarily like that. All right, do you like school? There's another question. Do you like school? Have you been to college? What kind of school did you go through? What, what was your best thing? What kind of sports did you do? Did you have a good time? What kind of sports did you talk about? Meaning, did you play volleyball and basketball and track? And what did you do in sports? And what, what, what kind of... What kind of activities did you have? Now, here in the Philippines, they really don't have a lot of activities. Oh, they have volleyball from time to time and basketball from time to time. But they really don't have a curriculum for, for sports where I'm at. There's, If R want to play basketball, she could play maybe maybe uh, one game a month. So it's really hard here. It's, it's really hard for the kids to even get in some kind of program. So they really need to vamp that up. So I'm looking at trying to get the girls to stay so they can 
experience more and see that people have physical education. They actually have physical education. Here, they don't have physical education. They have physical education, but it's hit or miss, and uh, we're too tired today, and the teacher didn't show up today, and he may show up next week, or whatever. You know, it's kind of like that. So, so when you were in school, were you very popular as a person? Were you a type of personality that was popular? Uh, did people like you? Did people hate you? What kind of and it, what it's trying to do is ask what kind of person you are. You know, is there something you wanted to do when you were a child? and you did not get to do? Now that's a good question. Because if you think about it, everybody wanted to do something. Well, I want to do this, and I want to do that, and I didn't get to do this, and didn't get to do that. And if you're a fiancé, husband, and or wife, you're going to want to know, because you want to be able to, you know, maybe help them. Maybe go do that. Well, I never rode a horse. I never, I never seen a train. And they don't know what trains are here. A lot of them never seen a horse. Heck, a lot of us never seen never seen a deer, or uh, any kind of any kind of things like that. Sure, there's goats here and things like that, but they never seen a lot of different type of animals: an elk or a deer or a moose, or any kind of, a squirrel. They don't even know what a squirrel is. The people ask me, "What's a squirrel? What is that?" <clears throat> a chipmunk. Uh, they don't even know what what is that. So. People ask me that all the time. What what is what kind of animal is this? I'm sure it's online. Is there really like that animal there in the state? Is there bears there? Is there really bears in the United States of America? Really, they have bears? Yeah, there's bears there. Is there giraffes there? <clears throat> no, only in parks. They have them in parks like um, zoos and things like that. But they ask, is there alligators and crocodiles? So you'd be surprised that a woman that is 25 or 30 years old will ask you those questions. She'll ask you, is there such a thing as this? Is there such a thing as that? See, because they're not familiar with it. So you need to ask the right questions. So what benefit do you see being married or being single? So you list the benefits. Are you a type person and you're looking for someone just give me the cash? Are you type of person someone that you want a long-term relationship? You want to have a relationship with them, rest of your lives until, and that's 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 me. That's root too, same way. You know, because you know, also too, I want to say this in closing that <clears throat> that people don't realize that parents influences the daughters and the, and the sons, but really overall, where I live, the the daughters feel the responsibility to take care of their parents more. Uh, than what I've seen, my personal opinion, than I've seen with the boys as much. Boys kind of go their way, get with their wives, and the wives end up taking up their time. And the parents sometimes may not see the benefits of, of the relationship. Where a woman will take the charge and say, listen, I'm taking care of my parents no matter what. Or I'm taking care of my brother no matter what. And uh, here it's really, really highly prevalent that the, the girls will take that responsibility. I don't know why... I don't know why it's that way, <clears throat> but it tends to, I'm thinking it's more of responsibility and maybe age thing. Uh, they do now per capita, there's, there's more girls than there is boys here. Uh, there's more girls being born than there is boys. And uh, even in my family, it's you know, four to five to one or six to one to the girls and one boy or all girls and two boys. Uh, like my wife, she has mainly all sisters and uh, two, three brothers, but it's all sisters. There's more sisters than there is brothers. So uh, the main thing I, I want to do this about is because people have asked me, what kind of questions should I ask my fiance? What kind of questions should I talk about? So today I wanted to talk about that and bring that up. And so people had a good idea on what to expect. And thank you. This comes from, uh, like I said, this came from John, a friend of mine out in Phoenix, Philly to Phoenix. I'll put his link in the video, so you guys want to check out his channel, you can. Really great couple. Lived here in Cebu, now back in the States. He's going to live there a few years and come back whenever they go vacations and things like that. So, uh, again, thank you. and Thank you so much, so much, Sean and Pauline, for coming on today. And thank you for, uh, guys, uh, spending your valuable time with me today. And uh, I will see you next time on Tom and Ruth Podcasts. And thank you so much. Thank you again, Sean and Pauline. You guys have a great and exciting day.
and thank you for listening.